good morning students today uh, we will uh, going to study about the subject compiler so what is this compiler so compiler is nothing but is a uh, is a program it reads the source program that is written in one language and translate it into target program it is equal to another language okay so that is compiler so here uh, you can see this uh, compiler so it's this compiler it reads the source program so whatever we written that program is uh, taken as input by the compiler and it produces the target program as the output okay so while uh, performing this operation it also do one important uh, operation that is it reports the error that is present in the source program okay so it reports the error to the user that is uh, present in the source program so that is the compiler so next one there are uh, the several uh, source uh, language uh, thousands of source languages are there so the, from the fortran pascal c etc so the first uh, compilers are actually classified into single pass multi pass uh, load and go debugging optimizing etc so well, the first compiler is actually developed uh, as the fortran compiler actually for developing this compiler they will take a uh, long years okay so actually for this fortran compiler they took uh, 18 we are going to discuss about what is analysis and synthesis model of the compilation so there are two parts of compilation first one is analysis and second one is synthesis so what is this analysis means this analysis part it breaks up the source program into constituent pieces okay so it creates intermediate representation of the source program so la, la, at last one we will see what is this intermediate representation actually there are several various forms of intermediate representations are there uh, so that is um, uh, the triple uh, triple three address code etc okay so here the, there are two parts of compilation first one is analysis and synthesis model of compilation so here first one is analysis part so what is this analysis part means this part it breaks up the source program into constituent pieces and it creates intermediate representation of the uh, source program so next one what is this uh, synthesis part synthesis part is nothing but it can extracts the desired target program from this intermediate representation okay so that is synthesis so analysis part okay it is uh, responsible for analyzing the program and it uh, generates the intermediate representation but synthesis part is responsible for producing the target program from this intermediate representation so here uh, we will see the analysis and synthesis model uh, diagram so here uh, first of all we read the the source code and then it is taken by the uh, front end okay so front end is nothing but some compiler having some faces in that faces uh, we having uh, first is four faces lexical syntax semantics intermediate code so we call that is the front end okay so once if we are compiler uh, so compiler it reads the source code uh, as the front end and it produces the Uh, intermediate uh, source code okay a source code is given into the uh, front end part and then uh, it uh, given into the inter uh, it, uh, it produces the intermediate representation so this intermediate representation given as input to the back end this back end is only responsible for producing the target code that is the machine code okay while uh, doing this operations uh, it uh, also uh, it will do the error okay it verifies the error okay so it also verifies the error okay so this analysis and synthesis model it uh, first it reads the uh, source program so this source program is given as input to the front end okay so in this front end what are the parts is are mean there means lexical analyzer syntax analyzer and then one which is semantic analyzer 
So these are the analyzer software. So this uh, 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 this front end produces the output as intermediate representations. Okay, this intermediate representation taken by the backend of the compiler. This backend of the compiler is responsible for generating the target code. Our target code is the machine code. Okay. So while performing these operations, the main important part of the another uh, the compiler is it reports the error. Okay. So next uh, we will discuss about what the analysis part will do. Okay. So the analysis part it reads the source program. And it uh, produces the one hierarchical structure we called that is the syntax tree. Okay, so this analysis part it takes the input as source program and it produces the one hierarchical structure we called that is the syntax tree. Okay, so you know how to construct syntax tree. So in the syntax tree, each node represents the operations. And children of that nodes uh, represents the arguments of operations. Okay, so in the syntax tree, okay, you know what is tree? Tree is nothing but it is the collection of nodes. So in which the nodes, uh, each node represents the operations, and the children of that node represents the arguments of operation. Okay, so for example, we will see one example. You consider one uh, statement that is position equal to initial plus rate star 60. You consider this statement. So in this statement, I'll, uh, for this statement, you construct a syntax tree. So you know how to construct syntax tree. So the condition is the arguments of the, uh, the each node represents the operation and children of the nodes represents the arguments. Okay, so here, uh, you see, uh, first one is equal. Uh, first one is here. You first one you take uh, rate star sixty. Okay, you construct this index tree from bottom to top based on priority order. Here the priority of the operator is star. So first you uh, take down this operation, star multiplication operation, that is a uh, rate star sixty. So in this, what is the operation multiplication? So you take this operator, okay? Yeah. So first one T, you take parent as the this operation star. What about children of this operator? No. So children of the operator is nothing but the operate uh, arguments of that operation. So for this multiplication, we take the arguments as a rate and then sixty. So uh, rate, okay? You take uh, rate is the left child and sixty is the right child of this operation. So you draw like this, okay? You take uh, star is the opera, uh, parent node and rate is the uh, left child and sixty is the right child, okay? So here uh, you can understand that, okay? Here a GDN node is the operation. Operation is multiplication, and the, its uh, childrens uh, of that node is arguments. Okay, for arguments for the multiplication is rate and sixty. So rate comes at the uh, left child, and the sixty comes at the in the comes in the right child. Okay. So next uh, is we going to uh, our operation is plus operation that is addition operation we going to add initial with rate star 60 so here what is the operation plus okay so you write that plus at the top okay and all make the children's as the arguments of that operation for this addition what are the arguments the first or left argument is initial so on the you write form this initial as the left child and rate star 60, you make that as the, uh, sorry, this is the left side and this is the right side. Okay. So next one, we assign everything in the variable position. So here the operation is equal. So in the top, okay, you write equal and make position as the left side. Okay. So this is the way of drawing syntax tree. So in the analysis part, Okay, so we create one for tree. So that tree is called syntax tree. So here you can understand that the the in the each node represents the here the each node represents the 
operation, the, uh, the children of that node represent the arguments of that operations. Okay, so next we will see what are the types of analysis. Okay, so actually this analysis consists of three phases. Okay, so first phase, linear analysis. Second one is hierarchical analysis and third one is semantic analysis. Okay. So this analysis consists of three phases. First one linear analysis, hierarchical analysis and second one is semantic analysis. Okay. So first we will see what is linear analysis. So linear analysis is nothing but actually this is the first phase of the compiler. Okay. So in that compiler, the linear analysis it reads the source program from left to right and group that into tokens that are sequence of characters that having a collective meaning. Okay, so that is linear analysis. Actually, the compiler, actually, uh, the, uh, the parts of the compilers are divided into analysis and uh, uh, synthesis. Okay, so in this analysis, three analysis linear. Okay, so what is this linear means? This is the first phase of the compiler. So what this linear analysis will do means it reads the source program from left to right and group that into the tokens. Okay, so that is the main task of linear analysis. Okay, so this linear analysis is also called as lexical analysis or scanning. Okay. Other name of this linear analysis is nothing but it's a lexical analysis or uh, we can say that is the scanning. Okay. So uh, here we will see one example. Okay. So uh, what the lexical analysis will do? Otherwise, what, do, what is this linear analysis will do? So what is the main use of lexical analysis? Yes, it's nothing but it reads the source program from left to right and it forms the token. So token, what is here? Uh, you want to know what is token? Token is nothing but we tell about uh, uh, the type. Okay, so the type of the input stream. Okay, so actually, what is this type means? Actually, here um, you will see one example. Here we take one example, the same example, position equal to initial plus rate star sixty. So what is the type of this position? Position is a keyword. Is this position is a keyword? No, this is not a keyword. Actually, this is the identifier and uh, equal to is nothing but it is the assignment symbol. Again, initial, okay, you verify is, this is a keyword. Okay, no, it's not a keyword. So, it's an identifier again. Okay? Plus is nothing but uh, addition operator and rate is again, uh, is an identifier. This star is nothing but it's a multiplication operator and uh, 60 is nothing but it's a number or constant. Okay, so that is in one token. Token is nothing but we tell about the category of the input stream. Okay, categories is nothing but it's a keyword or we verify about it's a keyword, it's a variable or identifier, it's a operator or any other special characters. Okay, so that is the category. Okay, so we will see. The same thing, we take the uh, exam less position equal to initial plus rate star 60. So for lexical analyzer, you're going to uh, group, the, uh, group, the, uh, group the input stream into tokens. Okay, so the tokens are, first one is uh, position. So position is nothing but it's an identifier. And next sequel is assignment symbol. And initial is nothing but it's a, again identifier. And then one day we have had one sign plus. Okay, so it's a plus sign. Again, rate is the identifier. And next one day we have had a star operator. It's nothing but it's a multiplication sign. And 60 is nothing but it's a number. Okay, this is what the lexical analyzer will do. Okay, so it uh, scan the input stream from left to right and it uh, forms into token. So you remember that what is this uh, token means it's nothing but it's a category of the input stream okay so next another task of this lexical analyzer is uh, it's uh, uh, it's uh, discards the blanks 
okay yeah so actually when it eliminates the blank uh, during the lexical analysis okay suppose when, uh, in our input string uh, we leave any uh, blank spaces means that will be discarded by the lexical analyzer okay it never read that blanks okay so next we will see the analysis uh, is hierarchical analysis okay so what is this hierarchical analysis means uh, it is the it's the token as the input or it takes the token as the input and it produces the hierarchical structure uh, we call that is the syntax tree okay yeah so it creates one hierarchical structure we called that is the tree or syntax tree okay so it uh, hierarchical analysis is nothing but it reads the token as input and it produces one hierarchical structure it we call that is a tree is also called as syntax tree okay so this hierarchical analysis is also called as parsing or syntax analysis hierarchical analysis is also called as parsing or syntax analysis okay so what is the use of this uh, hierarchical analysis means so it grouping the tokens of source program into grammatical phrases that are used by the compiler to synthesize output okay grammatical phrases of source program actually represented by the parse tree so this already we i told you now so it reads the token and it produces the hierarchical structure it's we call that is the syntax tree otherwise we can say that is the parse tree okay so this syntax uh, uh, analysis this hierarchical analysis uh, is also called as parsing okay syntax analysis and so on otherwise we can say this is the hierarchical analysis otherwise we can say this is the parsing okay so we will see the example for this syntax analysis or hierarchical analysis or parsing so first of all, uh, you take this okay so actually what is the statement our statement is our position is equal to initial plus rate star 60 okay position equal to initial plus uh, rate star 60 here okay for this statement we going to construct parse tree or syntax tree or hierarchical tree okay so how we can draw that so already i told you so you see that okay from bottom to okay so it's a uh, better uh, you draw, construct this tree from uh, bottom to top okay so bottom to top means it's uh, somewhat empty is here so here uh, you see the priority of the operator here is a star so you draw that okay uh, rate and then on the star and then on the right child is 60 okay so next one the initial plus okay so on the in the bottom you put plus so left child is initial and right child is this star okay right star 60 so next one the you draw this uh, uh, equal to the left is position and right is this all calculations okay so this is the hierarchical structure we call this is the parse tree or syntax tree okay so that is only explained here okay so the expression initial plus the rate is followed by a star it is not grouped into single phrase by itself okay actually this hierarchical structure uh, of a program is expressed by recursive rule okay for recursive rules means you know that okay for example uh, If any, I will take any identifier is an expression, and any number is an expression. Means if expression one and expression two are expressions, then so are expression one plus expression two, expression one star expression two. Otherwise, within the parameters is expression one. Okay, so it's actually this is a 
this is the rigor it's expressed by rigorsing rules how it means suppose we take any identifier is an expression and any number is an expression then expression 1 and expression 2 or ex, uh, expression 1 and expression 2 or expressions then so or expression 1 plus expression 2 expression 1 star expression okay so this is the recursive okay so next uh, phase is semantic phase okay so the first analysis phase is lexical analysis or linear analysis second phase is about hierarchical analysis uh, this is also syntax called the syntax analysis or parsed and third analysis is semantic analysis so what is this semantic analysis means So here it verifies uh, the certain checks are performed to ensure that the components of a program fit together meaningfully. Okay, so here the main task of this uh, semantic analysis is that is nothing but it verifies the type. Okay, so the type checking is performed by uh, this uh, uh, semantic analyzer. Okay, so the main task of semantic analysis is it verifies the source program for semantic errors. Okay, so it verifies the source program for semantic errors. Okay, so it takes the hierarchical structure that is determined by the syntax analysis phase as the input and it identifies the operators and operands of the expressions and the statements. Okay, so uh, the main important component of the semantic analysis is already i said type checking okay so uh, uh, what what this type checking will do means suppose you consider one binary arithmetic operator is applied to an integer and real okay you consider the scenario the we are going to apply to one binary arithmetic operator to an integer and a real real operator okay so in this case the compiler may need to convert the integer to a real okay so we will see this uh, in the diagram so already we draw this this is the syntax tree it is created by syntax analyzer if the semantic analyzer the input for semantic analyzer is this syntax tree and it going to verify the type checking the type checking is nothing but uh, so it verifies the type of the operands okay yeah so here already i told you suppose you're going to uh, do the uh, calculation in uh, between integer and the real variable means sometimes the in case of uh, in this case the compiler may need to convert integer to real okay so that is only shown here okay so the compiler it converts the in the variable from integer to real character okay so this is semantic analyzer okay so that's all about uh, analysis phase okay so uh, first of here you want to know so what is compiler so what is actually compiler means compiler it converts high level language to uh, one form of low level language so compiler uh, we having two uh, compilation parts one is analysis and synthesis so what is analysis will do means it convert high level uh, sorry uh, it, it takes uh, reads the source program and it produces intermediate representation this intermediate representation taken by the uh, uh, next phase semantic sorry it's a synthesis phase so it produces the target code okay so that is what we see next one that we saw about the three types of analysis phases lexical analysis syntax analysis semantic analysis okay so what is lexical analysis ma? lexical analysis is nothing but just it reads the source program and convert into token and syntax analysis it takes the token as input and it produces the syntax tree that is a hierarchical one form of hierarchical structure we call that is a syntax tree or parse tree as output of the syntax analyzer Semantic analyzer, it taken this uh, parsey as input and it verifies it's, uh, grammatically it correct. Okay, so also it verifies the type checking. So verifies the type. Okay, so that's all the about uh, the introduction.
So next we will going to see about the phases of a compiler. So phases of compiler. So compiler it operates in phases. So each of which transforms the source program from one representation to another. Uh, here uh, we will see the diagram. So first one is source program. So th these are the phases of the compiler. So first one is lexical analyzer. Second phase is syntax analyzer. Third phase is semantic analyzer. And fourth one is intermediate code representation. And fifth one is code optimizer. And sixth one is code generation. Okay. So these are the phases of the compiler. So the input for lexical analyzer is the source program. Okay. And then uh, output of one phase is given as input to the next phase that is uh, the output of lexical analyzer is given as input to syntax analyzer and output of syntax analyzer is given as input to next phase semantic analyzer the output of semantic analyzer is given as input to next phase intermediate code generation and output of intermediate code generation is given as input to the next phase code optimizer and output of code optimizer is taken as input by the code generation okay so here output of this code generation is our target program actually the compiler will produce the target program as Okay. So output of the, the compiler is actually assembly program. The phases of compiler. So compiler actually it operates in phases, each of which transforms the source program from one representation to another. Here you see uh, lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer, semantic analyzer, intermediate code generation, code optimizer, code generation. So these are the phases of the compiler. So here the output of one phase is uh, given uh, will given to uh, the input for another next phase. So here. Uh, you'll see this is the lexical analyzer its output is given to uh, syntax analyzer the output of syntax analyzer given as input to semantic analyzer the intermediate uh, code generation it takes the output of semantic analyzer as input and code optimizer the output of intermediate code generator is given as input to code optimizer as well as the output of code optimizer is given as input to uh, code generator okay so next uh, here we will see 
the lexical analyzer the source programmers given us input uh, to the lexical analyzer and uh, target programmers uh, uh, assembly language code okay so while performing these uh, uh, operations or phases uh, it, it having to common uh, one special uh, phase that is simple table manager and error handler so uh, we will see uh, next okay what what is this okay Okay, first we will see the phases of a compiler. So, first one, linear analysis. Okay, so already I told you, this is the first phase of the compiler. So, what uh, this is linear analysis, it's also called as lexical analysis, okay. So, otherwise we can say this is scanning, okay. Why? Because uh, this, this linear analysis, it reads the source program or it scan the source program from left to right and it forms that into a token, okay. So, that is in a linear analysis, okay. So, I already told you this linear analysis is also called as lexical analysis or scan. Okay, so for example, you consider one uh, statement with uh, uh, assignment statement, position is equal to initial plus uh, rate star 60. So we grouped that into tokens. So first of all, the phases of compiler, okay, it's a, a lexical analyzer is going to uh, do the tokens okay so how to write the token that is uh, uh, first it reads the source program from left to right our source is position equal to initial plus uh, rate star 60 so it's grouped into token token is nothing but a category of the input string okay yeah so to, uh, we will analyze about that so first of all position so position actually uh, you verify already I told you what is position actually this position is actually it is a not a keyword so on the day we go for uh, so this is the uh, we taken this is the identifier or variable similarly next symbol is actually here is a, is a equal to this equal to is nothing but is a assignment symbol and the next one is is a initial this initial is nothing but it's a identifier and the next one is plus okay plus is nothing but what is that is a sign plus sign and then rate is a again identifier and multiplication sign and then number okay so the main another important task of this compile the lexical analyzer is while uh, forming the token it discards or it eliminates the uh, blanks okay this lexical analyzer it never reads the blank spaces okay this blank spaces and commands are discarded by the compiler okay so here uh, you want to know another one thing how to write uh, how to write the um, what is that uh, the tokens okay so how uh, how you can write the token means is a type of the token name value okay so this is the way of writing the token okay so on the thing uh, we have in the example position equal to initial plus rate star 60 we already identified the type of token so how we can write that so here first one is identifier so we give the number for identifier id comma one and then uh, we having the operator equal to so you write the operator equal to okay uh, ID one position equal to and next initial. So initial is again identifier. So you write token name is ID and then value for this is to ID initial plus rate. Next is our operator plus. So you put in here and the angle bracket you put next again identifier position equal to initial plus rate. Rate is again identifier. Token name is ID and value. This is the third tree. 
next to what is the operator so next, next to whatever the statement star yes okay star is written here and then 60 okay 60 is nothing but it's a number okay so it's written right okay so this is the way of writing the token so the token name and then you put the comma value so uh, we uh, actually our example is actually this is one example initial is equal to sorry position is equal to position is equal to initial plus rate star 60. So actually this is our statement. For this statement, so how we can write, uh, mention the uh, output of lexical analysis that is token name comma value. So we write the token name. So actually this position is ID. So we write ID comma value is one and then equal to is the assignment symbol. So uh, we write assignment symbol and then initial is again identified. So token name is ID comma two and then plus is again the symbol and then rate is again id comma 3 and then star is again multiplication sign and then 60 okay yeah so this is the way of mentioning the output of lexical analyzer okay so next we are going to see about second phase of the compiler is uh, uh, syntax analysis okay the so syntax analysis is also called as hierarchical analysis so what is this hierarchical analysis? Uh, this hierarchical analysis is also, uh, actually it's also called as parsing. Otherwise, we can say syntax analysis. What this hierarchical analysis means, this uh, reads the token as the input. And otherwise, it takes the token as input and it uh, uh, constructs one uh, hierarchical structure, one form of hierarchical structure uh, with collective meaning is we call that structure as index tree or tree. Okay, so what is this hierarchical analysis means? It taken that uh, token as input and uh, it produces a hierarchical structure with the collective meaning we call that as the syntax tree okay since this hierarchy analysis is also called as parsing or syntax analysis okay already i told you so next uh, uh, what is the main task of this hierarchical analysis it's a grammatical okay it verifies grammatical phrases of the source program are represented by parse tree okay so next, this is the example of our hierarchical analysis. Okay, so hierarchical analysis, the output of hierarchical analysis is syntax tree or parse tree. Okay, so what is this, uh, what, what actually it will do? It construct the syntax tree or parse tree. So what is our input statement? What is our input statement? Position equal to initial plus rate char 60. Okay, this is our input statement. For this statement, you have to throw the syntax tree. So actually, uh, we converted this statement into actually a token. Okay, yeah. So what is the token? Token of this statement. Token of this statement is, is position means is, uh, actually we written like this id1 is equal to id2 plus d2 plus id3 star 60. Okay, so, so this is the output of lexical analyzer. This output is given as input to the next phase syntax analyzer okay yeah so syntax analyzer it reads this token and it uh, constructs the hierarchy structure or syntax tree or pass tree okay so how it construct that that mark so first one there is uh, it takes this is a star okay actually the uh, star and then the left child is id3 okay it's an identifier okay it's an identifier three and then when the right child is number 60 and the top uh, plus sign 
and left child is again identifier to right child is this uh, star and then uh, assignment symbol at the top and it's the left child is id1 it's identifier one and then right child is this uh, calculations okay so this is the way of constructing uh, the syntax tree okay so next one is next phase of the compiler is semantic analyzer so what is this semantic analyzer means It verifies the type, okay, your type checking, okay. So it performs uh, type checking. So type checking is nothing but uh, uh, you consider the example. Suppose uh, we're going to perform the arithmetic operation. So in which the arithmetic operator is applied to one integer variable and uh, in a real uh, variable. In this case, compilers may need to convert the integer to a real okay so this is this output is uh, given below the first we have uh, this is already be thrown the uh, syntax tree by with the help of syntax analyzer uh, in the semantic analyzer it uh, takes this as the input and it going to verify the type okay so here we uh, shown that okay so here into two uh, real of uh, 60 okay because uh, sometimes uh, we use one uh, integer and a real variable for adding means okay we have to convert this integer to real okay so that is uh, the, that output is uh, shown here okay so next one is we will see what is simple table manager okay so what is uh, uh, this is the one uh, the uh, this is the special uh, phase of the compiler that is simple table management and the error handler so this simple table manager it is used to uh, record the identifiers used in the source program okay and also it collect information about various attributes of each identifier okay that is simple table manager okay it records the identifiers used in the source program and also it collect information about various attributes of each identifier okay so these attributes may provide information about storage allocated for an identifier its types and its uh, scope okay so uh, next the symbol table is a data structure it containing record for each identifier with the fields for the attributes of the identifier okay so when an identifier in the source program is detected by the lexical analyzer the identifier is entered into the symbol table suppose uh, our source program our source program uh, we detect any identifier means that details uh, about uh, the identifier is entered into the uh, source entered into the symbol table actually here one important thing about uh, that means this uh, attributes of an identifier actually cannot nor determined during lexical analysis so for example okay you consider in a pascal declaration okay so in the pascal declaration uh, suppose we use var position comma initial comma rate colon real okay so in the pascal how we can declare that uh, uh, that means where okay variable where position comma initial uh, rate uh, we declare that is a real okay so the type real is actually not known when position initial plus rate are seen by the compiler okay so the remaining phase actually gets information about identifier into the symbol table and then use this information in various ways okay for example when doing the semantic analysis and intermediate code generation we need to know what the type of identifiers are okay so only we can check the source program its uses valid ways okay so that only we can generate the proper operations okay so uh, code generator actually typically enters and uses detailed information about the storage assigned to identifiers okay 
So, e, uh, next of all, we see about error detection. Actually, this error detection and reporting this special uh, phase in the compiler, uh, we, this phase is actually uh, encounters, uh, can encounter errors, okay? So, after, uh, however, only once uh, detecting an error, a phase must show the deal with that error so that compilation can proceed, allowing further errors in the source program to be detected. Okay. So, errors uh, where the token stream violates the structure rule of the language are determined by the syntax analysis. Okay. Suppose the uh, syntax related errors as is, uh, the structure rules or sometimes uh, mistaken means that will be directed by uh, syntax analysis okay so next uh, lexical phase actually what type of errors will detect means it can detect the errors that characters are remaining in the input not form any token of the language okay so that is lexical phase okay so lexical phase actually it detect the errors where the characters remaining in the input okay while forming the token already we i told you lexical phase means it used to detect the errors okay so uh, lexical uh, phase sorry it uh, forms the token while forming the token suppose any remaining inputs are there means that type of error is directed by the lexical analyzer so next after syntax and semantic analysis some compiler generate an explicit intermediate representation of the source program we can think of this intermediate representation as a program power and abstract machine this intermediate representation should have two important properties. So first one is it should be easy to produce and it is easy to translate into target program. Okay. So inter actually, uh, so uh, we first lexical, syntax, semantics. So next phase is actually intermediate code representation. So some compilers, it generates the intermediate uh, representation. What is, what is the main important properties of this intermediate representation? It's easy to produce and it's easy to translate into target program. So here, there are various forms of intermediate code generations are there. Uh, they are uh, POSIX, triple, uh, next one is three address code, triple. Okay, so many forms of intermediate representations are available in the compiler. But uh, most, most of the forms, uh, they are used as the three address code, okay. Okay, three address code only in, uh, we will see uh, as the intermediate code. Uh, so, um, actually, the properties of this three address code is here we can use at most three operands. Okay, in the three address code, we can use at most three operands. Okay, not more than three operands. Maximum, you can use only three operands. So for example, uh, you can use A is equal to B plus C. Okay, so here how many operands? Okay, three operands. Okay, we can say so this is a three uh, address code. Okay, in the three address code, you can use maximum three operands. Okay, how many operands are there here? Uh, A, B, C. Okay, so three operands, not more than three operands. Okay, you keep that in mind. Okay, so next, another important properties for three address code is you uh, may use... Uh, uh, you can use temporary variables for storing the calculations. Okay, for, for example, suppose I want to store uh, here, uh, you take B plus C star B. Okay, so this is the calculation. Okay, how how the form of three address code? So for three, we have to con convert the given statement into three address code. Okay, what is the condition of three address code? It's maximum three operands, not more than three operands. So how we can calculate? So uh, part by part. Okay, you take part by part uh, for and do the calculations. Uh, the result of the calculations are stored in temporary variables. So I uh, take one calculation. P1 is equal to 
to I going to take C star B. Okay, now you verify that. Okay, C star B. I take the part of the calculation. C star B. This C star D. D uh, one equal to C star D means here how many operands I used here? Uh, only three operands. Okay, so maximum three operands only allowed in intermediate representation that is in the three address code. Okay, so G one equal to C star D is this is a three address code? Yes, if this is a uh, three address code. So next calculation I am taking. T2. So, so T2 is equal to, I'm going to do next calculation, B plus, already C star B is stored in the variable T1. So, I'm using T1. Okay. So, now verify that. T2 equal to B plus T1. Here, how many operands I used here? Maximum three operands only. T2, B, T1. So, three operands. Okay. So, the result is actually stored in the variable what? A. So I assigned A is equal to what now? It. Okay, yeah. So this is the way of writing three address code. Actually, so many forms of three uh, intermediate codes are there. Uh, already I mentioned now. Uh, triple, post six, uh, three address code. Okay, so many forms. Uh, but uh, uh, most of the compilers, they are using three address code format. The properties of three address code is the important property is you can use at most uh, at most three operand in the uh, three address code. Okay, yeah. So here uh, they are you given the statement is a equal to b plus c star d in uh, in which uh, how many operands they are used? Ma? Four operands uh, a b c d four operands. So this is not the three address code. So we are in need to convert that into three address code. Okay, yeah. So with the help of intermediate code generator, we can convert that into three address code format. Actually, this T1, T2, A. So these are the, the format of three address code. Okay, so next uh, we will see the example. So already uh, we use the uh, statement position equal to initial plus uh, rate star 60. So actually this intermediate code generator, it, it takes the output of semantic analyzer as the input. Okay. So output of semantic analyzer we know. So first of all uh, here, here we are used uh, in the bottom to top, you consider that into two real of uh, 60, next rate star into two real, initial plus uh, rate star into two real, position equal to this calculations, okay? So first of all here, We take the first calculation that is into two real of 60. So we take that is into the temporary variable. I'll told you for each calculation to store each calculation, you can you may use temporary variable. So I use temp one. And then what is our next calculation? ID three star temp one. Okay, it's stored in temporary variable two. Next one is we add ID two with this uh, temp two. This result is stored in item 3 and ID 1 is equal to you know, item 3. Okay, so this is intermediate code. What about the next phase of the compiler? Uh, next phase is code optimization. Uh, in order to in order to foster the um, running machine code. Uh, we uh, use you know, optimizer. Uh, this optimizer will reduce the code size. Actually, our intermediate code uh, it uh, produces a lot of the uh, intermediate representation of code. So it is possible to reduce the uh, reduce the, reduce the time. Of, okay, uh, sorry, it reduce the speed of the uh, machine okay running time okay yeah so the so read speed of the uh, running speed okay so we have to uh, improve the speed of the machine we uh, we are you we going to use code optimizer this code optimizer
it reduces the size of the code actually the output of uh, intermediate code is we have four lines okay yeah? so for each statement it going to generate four lines of intermediate code mean it occupies lot of memory uh, from the computer okay so we have to reduce the size of the code with the help of red code optimizer so while reducing the code okay you keep it in mind okay we have to for Follow the properties of three address code. Okay, so how we can compress this code? Okay, with the optimizing the code. So actually here into two real of forty. Okay, so we substitute this temp one in here means okay it never affect the uh, properties of three address code. So how we can write id three star temp one. Okay, sorry id three star into two real of we take and that is the temp one and instead of a separate line id one equal to temp three just to substitute temp three as id one so uh, we got the statement temp one equal to id three star 60.0 and then one the id one equal to id two plus temp one okay yeah so uh, uh for intermediate code generator it produces a lot of line so in order to improve the performance of the compiler we going to use this optimizer okay it reduces the size of the code okay so uh, we can save somewhat memory okay so next one is code generator this is the final phases of the compiler is a code generator so it consists actually it consisting of uh, relocatable machine code or assembly code okay So next one is okay. So we consider this is the relocatable machine code. Actually, uh, this is a machine code uh, uh, that is assembly code. So here we are using the mnemonics. Okay. So what is our uh, statement? Okay. So we are going to uh, take an as uh, this output of this optimization is the input for code generation. So move id three comma register r two. And then we're going to multiply this uh, register R2 with uh, 60.0. And then when the day we move ID2 into the register R1 and then add uh, this R2 and R1. So it's add the registers R2 and R1 and it store the result back into the register R1. So we the, actually the result is to, we want to store in the identifier ID1. So we use the statement move uh, this register R1 into the ID1. Okay, here we are using the uh, we have, we state uh, variable, okay, F, okay, yeah, the character F. So what is actually this F means, okay, it tells about the each instruction is a deal with floating point numbers okay the output of code generator is actually this mnemonics it's a assembly code or when it is mnemonics so this uh, mnemonics okay so you already studied in the actually microprocessor subject the same thing okay so for everything okay for uh, every identifiers we have to move it into the register after that only we can go for in you know, calculations okay another than we going to move the id3 into the register r2 and then once we multiply the number with R2, and then ID2, we have to move into the register R1, and then once we add uh, the R1 and R2, actually the result is stored back into the uh, register R1. Again, uh, we want to store the result in the variable ID1, so once to move R1, comma ID1. Okay. So here F is nothing but every we mentioned that every instruction is. Uh, is to deal with the floating point numbers okay so that's all about code generation same thing is explained here so next to the, uh, here we want to know another one thing cousins of the compiler that's all about phases of compiler suppose uh, the phases of compiler means you study uh, what is the lexical analyzer okay so lexical analyzer here you want to know what is the form of input and what is the form of output, what the lexical analyzer will do and what are the errors handled by lexical analyzer. Okay, for each phases you have to know what is that and what it will do and what are the errors handled by those phases. Okay, yeah. so first uh, uh, three phases is responsible for detecting the errors, lexical analyzer, syntax analyzer, semantic analyzer. Okay, so lexical analyzer, what type of errors uh, it detected? 
so it form the token while forming the token any uh, inputs are remaining there means that will be uh, taken as error okay by the lexical analyzer syntax analyzer the grammatical errors that is syntax related errors are handled by syntax analyzer semantic analyzer type checking okay so next one the intermediate code generator just it generates one intermediate code that is pre address code okay so properties uh, you have to follow while writing pre address code pre address code property is it at most three operator sorry three operands okay next code optimizer just it reduces the size of the code in order to improve the efficiency and then uh, code uh, generator it generates the uh, relocatable machine code or assembly code okay so that's all about phases of the compiler okay so next uh, cousins of the compiler okay so what is actually this cousins of the compiler means so is uh, actually uh, it is having uh, thing uh not uh, 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 simply we said it takes the compiler it reads the source language and it convert into a sub, uh, low level language okay so actually for this uh, process it's not compiler only involved okay so uh, we, uh, including compiler some of the other processes also responsible for converting high level language into low level language okay in that way so what is what the first processor means that is pre processor okay so what is what the pre processor will do means it produces input to the compiler actually uh, source language is actually get taken by the pre processor only this pre processor only uh, produces the input to the compiler okay so what the pre processor actually will do means it perform macro processing file inclusion okay next uh, language extensions okay so what is this macro process pre processing means mac pre processor allow a user to define macros that are short hands for longer constructs okay so that is in a macro processing so that is nothing but example uh, we can use a hash define okay so hash define Uh, suppose pi value three point one four. Okay, so we can mention. Okay, so this is macro processing. It's defined macros. That is nothing but is a short hands for longer construct. Okay, so instead of writing every time uh, pi value is equal to three point one four, instead of writing that, uh, we can write the short hands. Okay, that is by using hash define. Hash define pi. 3.14 okay it may used in the program okay next pre processor operation is file inclusion file inclusion is nothing but a pre processor suppose include header file into the program text okay so that is not, uh, for example c pre processor classes the contents of file suppose global dot h it replaces to the statement hash include global dot h when it process a file containing this statement okay so that is file inclusion is performed by the pre processor that is nothing but it replaces everything um, with, uh, without any hash file is uh, output of in you know, a file inclusion okay so you see that if uh, we having the file dots dot h okay in the main dot c hash include Dev start high, so so yeah, everything is uh, replaced. Okay, yeah, so replaced uh, uh, by okay. So here we having dev start high, uh, so included in the uh, with the help of hash include a dev start high means we get get the single program. Okay, yeah, so the single program we will get that with the help of inclusion. Uh, it's include every files. Okay, yeah, so at the output is we will get a single file. Okay, yeah, so that will be given as in uh, input to the A compiler, okay, yeah. So uh, actually, the first pro uh, language processing systems are there. First language processing the preprocessor. Preprocessor it do macro uh, include macro substitution and uh, file inclusion and uh, uh, given as uh, input to, to the compiler. Compiler takes the output of this preprocessor and it produces uh, assembly language, okay, yeah. So the third language processing system is assembly language. Actually, assembly language also is not known by the computer. 
processor actually we want to convert that into machine code okay yeah so output of compiler is only assembly language this assembly language we, we are in need to convert into machine language for that purpose we using next uh, language processing system is assembler okay so uh, compiler output is assembly language it is given as input to the assembler assembler it produces the assembly uh, more machine language that is a relocatable machine language is produced by the produced by the assembler okay and the next uh, we having next one is loader and link editor so this loader and link editor uh, uh, it link all relocatable machine code and load it into the compiler okay yeah so that's all about uh, what, uh, what is that language processing system okay so this loader and link editor the output of loader and link editor is absolute machine code okay okay so that's all about okay so language processing system otherwise presence of the compiler so okay here we having the diagram actually this is the language processing system so first one is actually preprocessor second one is compiler and third one is assembler and the, the fourth one is loader and link editor i explained now so actually our skeletal source program is given us to preprocessor preprocessor uh, it perform macro processing and file inclusion so everything is over means it given source program as output this program source program is taken by the compiler the compiler actually produces assembly program only okay yeah so uh, assembly language is also not known by the computers okay machines not understand that so we are need to convert this assembly program into machine code for that we are using assembler this assembler convert that into a um, relocatable machine code this uh, relocatable machine code is taken by the loader or link editor this link editor it uh, link all the relocatable relocatable codes and uh, uh, with the help of loader again it load back into the memory at last we will get the absolute machine code so here you can know one term cousins of the compiler who are all the cousins of the compiler then uh, in, uh, for this processing who are all in, involved uh, with the compilers they are we called uh, cousins of the compiler who are in, involved with uh, with the compilers preprocessor assembler loader link editor okay so we uh, they are called in uh, cousins of the compilers okay so already we discussed okay uh, that's all about uh, uh, the phases of compiler and introductions about the compiler okay here uh, grouping of phases actually uh, well, from the first time itself we see front end and back end what are the front end syntax analyzer semantic analyzer and uh, some form of intermediate code generator um, called the front end and back end uh, actually one uh, it is next optimizer code generator okay yeah, so they are uh, forms the back end okay so some compiler construction tools are there parser generator scanner generator syntax director translation engine automatic code generator the data flow engine so we are called compiler construction tools okay so that's all about introduction to compilers uh, okay any doubt in this so what we discussed means first uh, we discussed about what is compiler what are the parts of compilation that is analysis and synthesis parts we studied and then uh, we discussed about the phases of compiler there are six phases uh, lexical syntax semantics intermediate code code optimization code generation and we having two special phases a uh, simple table manager and error handler so next we discussed about cousins of the compiler and language processing system so for processing the language not only compiler is uh, responsible for converting high level language to a low level language some other uh, uh, processor also included they are uh, what are they preprocessor compiler assembler loader and link editor so here uh, we can uh, take uh, one thing cousins of the compiler uh, 
uh, who are all involved uh, with the compiler they we call they are the cousins for the compiler they are pre processor assembler loader or linear editor so next we discussed about front and back end so who what are the faces belong uh, to front and what are the faces belongs to back ends we discussed so next one is the compiler some of the compiler construction tools parser generator scanner generator syntax director translation engine automatic code generator data flow engines that's all about introduction so you have any doubt means you can clarify okay uh, any doubts okay thank you thank you students thank you all